CataractCoach.com. Damage caused by a pupil ring. When the pupil expansion ring is being removed, it damages the tissue. Let's watch carefully here. Now, beginning of the case here, kind of a mid-dilated pupil. Here comes a pupil expansion ring. And you can see this is injected into the eye nice and slowly. And as it goes there, we're going to hook these four segments onto the pupil margin. And that's going to give you the expansion. So now using a Sinsky hook, each of these segments has a little eyelet. That's helpful. Kind of pull that over here. Now be careful, the patient has this blue iris. And as we know, the blue iris is a little bit more fragile than a, a beefy brown iris like I have in my eye. And again, we get the whole spectrum of our patients. In our surgery center, we've got patients with all different color iris, you know, irises or irides. And now here we go. That looks pretty good. So get that ring centered up. That looks very nice, actually. Let's complete the phaco. Now, the phaco is pretty easy. Let's get that done. Let's get to the end of the case. That's the important part. Now, eye wells in the bag. Looks like a good case, right? Let's get that viscoelastic going in the eye. Let's get the ring out. Watch carefully, my friends. Now, getting it off of the pupil margin, nice and easy. Nice and easy. Get that over there on top. Get that one out, too. So disinserting the iris or the pupil margin from each of those little segments, that looks pretty good. It looks, it's freed up. And now let's take this thing out of the eye. Now here's where the issue becomes. So you, oh, so you already have a little bit of a prolapsing or weak iris there, a little bit of shallowing AC. So maybe more viscoelastic would be helpful here. But let's say, okay, grab here distally. I like that idea. Get the hook out and grab it anywhere there. You've seen me do this with a Malugan type ring, and I'm sure it'll work with this one also. When you grab this nice and easy, now this is a single-use device, so it's okay if we damage it. We're getting rid of it. This device is being thrown, thrown away. And so you, here you go, grabbing onto it, almost, almost. And once we grab onto it, we can retract it into the injector and remove it from the eye. But therein lies the catch. This is a little bit of a, of a bulky device, so you grab it there. It goes in, it goes in. It looks pretty good, right? Oh, okay, let's, let's maybe pull it in a little more. If you yank it out of the eye like this, now look. Oh, boy. Now what happened? Okay, looks okay. Hey, let me tell you about our podcast. Every week we have the best podcast in all of ophthalmology. The best. We teach you all the secrets to success for your own practice. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely serious. It's everywhere where you find podcasts. Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. You, you'll figure it out. You're smart. Now, all right, we got the... Bring out of the eye. This is a very floppy iris patient. Listen, don't blame the surgeon. Blame the patient for bad protoplasm. Remember this important lesson. You see a patient who had complications with surgery in one eye done elsewhere, and the other eye has still yet to be done, and you think, oh, for the second eye, I'll do a much better job. Yo, 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 take it easy. Hold it there, buddy. The second eye is going to have the same issues as the first eye. Give the first surgeon the benefit of the doubt. Now, look at here. It looks like a good case, but will the incision seal up? Notice there, if you look carefully, there's a cut to the roof of the corner incision. This is the good, good move here. Better part of judgment here is to get a suture in. And I even like the horizontal mattress suture. That's a great idea. By the way, nice draping, eye in primary. Take note to young ophthalmologists. You should be draping the same way. Now, tying up this suture, this is going to give us good closure of the incision. So I do like this you know, idea that when in doubt, just put the suture. If you put the suture at the time of surgery, it's not a complication, is it? If you see the patient post-op day one and the incision is leaking, and they go back to the OR to put a suture in, yeah, that's a complication. So Benjamin Franklin said it, right? A stitch in time saves nine. Meaning, just if you, if you think you need a suture, you need a suture. Just accept reality. Now you can see that looks pretty good. Get that suture is in good position. Get it rotated around. And then this patient's going to have a beautiful outcome. So I really ad I, I admire the surgeon here. He did a beautiful job with a pretty tough case. And remember, anytime you put an extra device in the eye, like a pupil ring of any design, any brand, it doesn't really matter. There are more potential issues and complications. Now, let's get this suture rotated. Okay, it's really not rotating that way. Maybe try the other direction. There we go. See, look at that. 
Now it looks good. Check the incision. Make sure it's totally watertight, which I'm sure it will be. Leave that suture in for at least a couple of months. Do not take the suture out after a week. I would say it needs a little more time to heal up. And at the end of the case, check everything with a wax cell. Make sure it's completely watertight. That looks great. So remember, every device has potential complications. And also remember, check out our podcast every week, an amazing podcast that will teach you the secrets to success in your practice.